Hi, everyone, and welcome to the very first edition of Mountain Forums, where we'll be talking about the data-driven stories we're obsessed with in 2023. My name is Jacob Trussell, Content Marketing Lead here at Mountain, and I'm going to be your moderator for today. Now, over the past three years, Mountain has partnered with some of the industry's top brands and publications to share insights, perspectives, and our data on why it's never been easier to advertise and succeed on connective TV. Now, we love working with our partners and we'll continue to co-host events with them now and in the future. But as we got closer to the end of the year, we wanted to finally realize something that we've been talking about since 2020, create our own series of events where we bring together our customers, our partners, and our in-house performance TV experts for roundtable discussions on all of the essential topics that matter most to marketers and advertisers. And hopefully do it in a way that doesn't feel like just another webinar you forgot you registered for until about an hour ago when you got a reminder email. Now, these forums will be an ongoing series, so stay tuned for announcements on future sessions. After our discussion, we'll have time for audience questions. So at any point, if you have a question for our speakers, feel free to drop it into the Q&A chat. Now, speaking of speakers, now I want to introduce our speakers, Ali Hayeri, our Senior Vice President of Marketing, and Tim Edmondson, our Senior Director of Content and Research. Now, part of me really wants to throw you both a curveball right now and start with like this corny icebreaker, like, I don't know, um, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, what do you love about your job? And, you know, what is your favorite early 2000s new metal band? But I think I might be actually overestimating how funny an inside joke is going to be to someone not in our Slack channels. So how about we just stick to that first question? So, Ali, let's start with you. Tell the folks at home a little bit about yourself. Um, <clears throat> thanks for everyone for uh, tuning in. Uh, my name is Ali Ha'eri. Uh, I've been with Mountain for over six years now. And... Um, uh, just pretty deep career in B2B marketing. I also teach a product marketing course at Northwestern and the uh, Integrated Marketing Communications Graduate Program. So just uh, just a marketing geek over here. I'll throw it to, uh, throw it to Tim. Hey, everybody. Uh, as Ali said, I'm Tim. Very happy that you're all uh, with us here today. Uh, a little bit about me. I've been working uh, in Mountain for uh, coming on eight years in January. So very excited about that. Okay. I know. <laughs> Where does the time go? Um, actually, the time has gone just observing the connected TV advertising space. How's that for a segue? Um, nice. Just, uh, you know, I've had a front row seat on the evolution of connected TV as an ad channel, as a performance marketing channel. Um, it's been a fantastic journey. Uh, I've learned a lot along the way, and I'm looking forward to sharing some of that uh, with you all today. And um, well, with that, shall we uh, get to the presentation? I say yes. Yeah. So, good. All right. Um, let's see. Well, it's not letting me go. There we go. There you are. Still difficulties averted. <laughs> um, so before we uh, dive in, I know that everyone's busy. Everyone has a lot on their plate. Um, webinars could be, you know, tough. It's a carbon time out on calendar. So the, for the folks that, uh, have to hop, maybe a fire drill pops up somewhere. Um, you have to, to take care of essential, uh, items on your to-do list. Um, we get it. And so we're front loading a bit of the presentation with this uh, key takeaway right at the start. Um, uh, affectionately called too long, didn't have time to watch. Um, so Basically, what we're going to be diving into today is this data, this data-driven story that we've been obsessing over uh, throughout the year. Um, reason being, uh, it has really kind of detailed and shown how uh, the best of the best in, in advertisers who are really getting the most out of uh, connected TV advertising, using it as a performance channel, driving serious results. Uh, it's helped map out their best practices, their common traits, what they go to, um, how they approach campaign strategy, et cetera. Um, and internally, we've we've called that the path to greatness uh, for some time, um, because obviously it's a, it's a journey to success on CTV. Um, it's really a way to, to illustrate that, you know, your campaign strategy, how you're handling creative, all of the above, uh, essentially leaning into it as a, as a digital performance marketing channel really unlocks uh, Connected TV's full potential. Um, now, Ali, I don't know if you wanted to 
add anything to that um, before we dive into the 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 much longer story version. Of yeah, this. I think just very briefly, um, you know, assuming that it's all marketers that have kind of joined us here today, uh, I think the the point to kind of reiterate is um, everything that is being shown to you today is just entirely data driven. Um, where we kind of examined. Uh, the success of a lot of mountain advertisers. So this is not something where it's just kind of hollow best practices, but rather um, we did the dirty work in terms of analysis of all of the campaigns that have run on the platform, and um, and and really the the diff- answering the difficult question of how, how and why these campaigns have been so successful. Um, so there's there's really kind of tangible benefits to to this analysis that we've actually done here today. Definitely, definitely. Um, so as we dive into uh, the story, what is the story? Um, well, uh, the too long didn't watch version gave you the cliff stones, uh, but essentially, uh, what we were trying to accomplish uh, with the path to greatness, um, you know, advertisers are adopting connected TV at record numbers. Um, there's more ad spend on connected TV now than there uh, there was the uh, year ago, year prior, year before that, etc. As all of the hallmarks of a fast growing ad channel. And um, we have access, uh, you know, we work with a ton of advertisers and they have access to uh, performance metrics. They they know the actual outcomes that are tied to the campaigns that they run uh, because they have that insight. We have that insight too. Um, and so we, we, we started the process of sifting through and uh, looking for commonalities, like I said a little earlier. And... Uh, we discovered that there's there are key elements, and, and one of those things is leaning into um, the, the full opportunity connected TV offers. And by that, I mean upper funnel, lower funnel. TV has traditionally been seen as an upper funnel medium. Get that? Um, makes sense. There's been decades where TV was a, is a broadcast medium where uh, you have a, a massive amount of reach, but the audience targeting, not so much. Um, you could uh, target your audience based on programming and network. But uh, it didn't have the level of sophistication or precision that you would find in a digital advertising channel. Um, but with connected TV, you do have that. And so leaning into you know, the advertisers um, who are generating the best results, we're really leaning into that, that aspect, um, reaching new audiences with a, an upper funnel prospecting campaign, um, diving into the lower funnel with retargeting, going after their uh, website visitors, or even uploading their CRM lists uh, for targeting. And so these two things, um, or rather this list of things, has really unlocked performance um, in a big way. It's a path to greatness that um, that these advertisers are taking. Um, Ali, do you want to add anything to that? Yeah, something to, to add to that is, um, and this is something that we learned running our own CTV ads early on, is I think for a lot of marketers who are new to this channel, the instinct is to carry over any sort of knowledge or understanding people have of running ads on linear TV, both in terms of the the process of creating the creative and also the process of getting the ads on TV. And and finally, also the process of trying to measure the outcomes of the campaigns. The the biggest sort of learning I had as a marketer um, uh, involved with running CTV campaigns, forget just my role at Mountain, but just someone who's using this channel is that it's far, far, far more similar to paid social advertising than it is to linear TV advertising. The, 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 the asset is the same as what you see on linear TV in terms of a 30 or 15 second spot, but the mechanics that go into uh, running the campaign and absolutely that go into measuring the campaign are nearly identical to paid social campaigns. And, th- and that's a good thing, by the way, you know, because paid social campaigns are very easy to put together. They're highly targeted and the measurement uh, is is incredibly high fidelity as well. And so that was kind of like the biggest lesson that kind of went into just learning this stuff myself. Yeah. And I think one of the lessons that um, that we took away from the research in general uh, is that, you know, it's not only just a successful way to advertise on connected TV. Um, you know, that's a blanket statement. It's like, oh, I, you ask anyone on this call, do you want to be successful running CTV advertising? They're going to say yes. Why wouldn't you? That would be weird. Um, the key is, is finding that faster path to profitable scale. It's 
being able to uh, take a strategy, take some creative and your audience uh, targeting, all those uh, those ingredients, combining them together, and the the results yield just a quicker uh, path to your, to what you're trying to accomplish. You're uh, you know launching maybe with a test budget, and then you're seeing success and you scale that even more. Um, that is possible on connected TV. Um, and a lot of these best practices, what we saw from the data is that is what people were doing. They were uh, launching uh, with purpose and, and wanting to um, uh, increase revenue, increase site visits, you name it, uh, they did it. Um, and so with the uh, through line of building a faster path to profitable scale, we're gonna dive into the specifics of that right now. Um, with our Path to Greatness story. So if you either have not seen this or would love a refresher, I'm going to do a Cliff's Notes version of what that really dives into. Um, and first things first, I mentioned uh, off the top that uh, advertisers that were leaning into both the upper and bottom funnel, they were seeing uh, stark success. You can see this these two charts here. It's showing that um, when you are hitting that upper funnel, following up with that bottom funnel, uh, you're going to see success. You're going to see better results than just focusing again on what TV has traditionally been, an upper funnel awareness play. Uh, that's going to limit your success. You got to lean into the, um, the, the the lower funnel aspects for sure. Um, and I know, Allie, that this is something that interests you greatly as a marketer and also someone who works at Mountain. So <laughs> what, what yeah, I mean, like what a, what a missed opportunity if you're not running retargeting on day one. And I've, I've met marketers who they have thoughts on this, you know, they, they, I, I, I don't know quite, <laughs> quite what the thrust is, but I, my, my assumption is that they probably feel like, Oh, my other channels are kind of like close the deal. Um, but the, the fact of the matter, first of all, it's kind of like, proven here with the analysis across many mountain advertisers, but also just, I think just taking a step back and thinking about the end user experience as it relates to CTV retargeting, it's incredibly powerful. Um, a lot of people obviously think about TV advertising as a prospecting channel, and it's certainly good for that. But the impact of TV as a retargeting channel, we we get this feedback from our own sales team a lot because we, um, we retarget people uh, uh, that visit our website. So if you want to experience that, I presume everybody who's, who's on the line here is streaming television, uh, go ahead and visit mountains website. Um, and then when you're streaming TV with your loved ones this, this evening, you'll be able to point to it and say, Hey, I know these guys. So I tuned into their webinar today. But, um, the, the, the point there is just, uh, a, a retargeting ad served via TV is tremendously powerful. Um, also, and, and this will be a common theme throughout today's presentation. A lot of the best practices for other channels sort of apply here. Um, when we think about retargeting advertising, a big consideration there is that part of the reason why they perform so well is that they're kind of relieved of the, the, the creative is relieved of the pressure of having to explain what the brand is and what it does. You're dealing with, you're constraining the, the audience to the campaign to people who already have some sort of familiarity with your brand. And so you could do other sorts of things from a messaging and creative standpoint to kind of seal the deal. And so same applies with TV, being able to, um, uh, to kind of continue through a message on television and being freed of having to spend a lot of time explaining who you are and why you exist. Um, just like it does with any other channel where you're running retargeting, it, it works here as well. And so again, the excuse here can't be, well, I'm retargeting with all these other digital channels that'll kind of do the job. Let me just kind of run on uh, prospecting. You really need to kind of go both feet in to to make this thing work. And, and again, the analysis sort of bears that out. Yeah. I mean, you look at those numbers just for the folks in the back, 27% uh, more site traffic, two times more return on ad spend. That's huge. That is all the incentive, I, I think, uh, you, you need to hear to, to realize how valuable this is uh, as a full funnel solution. Um, now, nobody likes to miss out, right? Who amongst us? I don't. Um, and one way to miss out is just being a little gun shy, being a little, uh, you know, you're waiting uh, for the right time. Um, you know, let's, let's make sure everything's perfect and we'll launch. Cool. I mean, you should measure uh, twice, cut once, right? But uh, waiting comes with an opportunity cost, right? Um, 
when you have an ad channel like connected TV, you know, the via like the performance TV platform uh, that Mountain, you know, owns and operates. The goal is to produce revenue. The goal is to produce a strong return on ad spend, more site traffic, grow your business, grow your brand, all of the above, right? Um, and if you're not running campaigns inherently that are on connected TV that have a fantastically effective um, ad unit, which is a TV commercial, right? Like those are the premium experience when it comes to advertising. Um, you're just not going to be generating results. That it's basic logic, but you know uh, it, it bears repeating. And so, our data when we dove into it um, was really showing us an interesting story where it, it compounds how important um, retargeting is to a connected TV uh, strategy. Um, those advertisers who uh, didn't launch connected TV, or I'm sorry, uh, saying that a lot. Uh, those advertisers who didn't launch uh, retargeting campaigns, they delayed, they put that upper funnel out there first, and then they waited, like, oh, let's generate some traffic, then we'll launch. Uh, that was that was costing them results. It was costing them performance. Um, 17, they only saw 17% more site traffic, 52% more rise uh, than those who didn't wait. Um, and so that's an issue. Um, I think this is just another proof point that uh, goes to show that it's you have to go all in. Um, Upper funnel, lower funnel, the whole nine yards. Uh, Ali, what, what do you what do you have to say about this one? I'm just I'm just thinking about this. Like, just it's it's shameful if you're not if you're not running them at the same time. Yeah. It's Shame just that. such a missed opportunity. <laughs> but let, let me let me kind of uh, give some back, back, background to to the disappointment that I feel in looking at that blue bar there. Um, one thing that has been the most surprising thing about running CTV, especially as a B2B brand. So again, just kind of divorcing myself from my role as someone who works a mountain and it's just someone who runs a marketing operation with um, with CTV as a channel that we run. One of the most surprising things for me has been the volume of traffic that's driven by connected TV. And so uh, for our team, anywhere from 20 to 25% of our total website traffic it stems from our CTV campaigns, which is just a insane number uh, to be able to say. And th thinking of that, uh, man, you're leaving so many visits and impressions on the table if you're not retargeting that volume of users on day one. Um, this one really kind of confuses me why, why someone would kind of wait. You should either do it all at once or or... I mean, you really should just do it all at once. There's no alternative to it. But, but I, 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 the thing I want to kind of inform there is just the the large volume of traffic that's coming from this channel. And look, you know, I suspect everybody here is a pretty savvy marketer. That's why you're taking the time to kind of um, learn about all of this. You're likely tapped out on channels that provide decent volume for you. Volume in terms of uh, not just conversion volume, but just you know website traffic. Um, and so that's been the sort of most compelling aspect of this channel for a lot of the marketers that I talk to is that uh, finally a new channel is up here that that drives really significant volume of traffic to their website. Um, and because of that, it just you you need to retarget that traffic uh, on day one because it's 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 such a large volume of traffic. And again, in our case, it's a quarter of our website's traffic. So um, this certainly makes sense. This totally checks out for me. Definitely. Yeah. Um, you know, as we've, uh, done this analysis, uh, you know, you go into it with hypothesis, you, but then you, you analyze the data and you see what the data uh, tells you That's the data driven story. Um, and so running into these instances where it kind of confirms a suspicion, it's like, yes, that makes sense. It's always nice to see those numbers that back that up. Um, and as we've gone through our advertisers, uh, I mentioned that we were uh, doing a lot of analysis on the, basically the all-stars of performance TV, of connected TV advertising. Um, they, we learned a lot from them. We consider ourselves experts in the space, but you know, we have a uh, essentially in a weird way, like a lab of a ton of advertisers who are now have the option to, to advertise with a performance marketing uh, slant on television. And we get to see what they do. And so uh, part of this analysis was doing deep dives on um, specific uh, advertisers and looking at what they've done. And a uh, key example of that 
uh, is the um, e-commerce direct and consumer brand Rumble, who sell fantastically comfortable and warm blankets. Highly recommend. It's a free plug for Rumble. Um, happy to do. They deserve it. They yeah, love their work, right? <laughs> um, and so you can see a bit of uh, the Rumpel's journey here, um, where they were advertising on connected TV. They were with Mountain uh, using the performance TV platform, and they were posting solid numbers. Um, but as we continue to explore what makes for success on connected TV, the best practices, etc. Um, we engage Rumpel in conversation. Uh, it was a two-way conversation as well, learning from them and learning from us. And you see a bit of the main narrative points here on this slide. Um, I think the key takeaways uh, were that they were, you know, like we had said, we were engaging with um, both prospecting and retargeting. Um, something very important to know uh, is that they, they ran evergreen campaigns as well. So TV advertising, generally speaking, you know, there's flights. You run this campaign to this end date, cool, on, on uh, to the next one. Um, what we've seen with our data is that an evergreen approach to connected TV, where you have a, a constant presence, you're engaging the audiences that matter to your brand, you're engaging the audiences that are likely to engage with you, uh, make a purchase, sign up for something, et cetera. Um, it's important to stay top of mind with those folks. And that's what Rumble did. They launched an evergreen campaign and that second uh, little waypoint there, you can see uh, the impact that uh, leading into the holidays, this is a very uh, topical conversation right now. If you're going into the holiday season, uh, I just saw a stat yesterday that said the majority of um, uh, consumer spend is expected to happen in November, which Black Friday, that makes sense. Uh, but you want to make sure you're in that consideration set, like in October, you need to be on their radar. And so Rumble uh, followed that practice and uh, it generated excellent results for them. They didn't have to fight for attention from the word go once November hit and people really started to fire up their seasonal uh, holiday shopping. They were already an option that was like, oh, now I'll buy that very cozy blanket. Um, so it's very important to uh, not only be hitting that full funnel, but also uh, having an evergreen presence on the channel. Um, and then also being there consistently, but of course, heavying up when it comes to uh, the, 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 the big holidays that you want to hit hard and see in that third way point. Rumple, uh, heavying up for Memorial Day, generating strong results because of it. Same deal with the holiday season. Um, Ali, uh, what do you think in terms of that fourth one? Uh, this is totally me teeing you up, so uh, heads up. But uh, you see something on there about creative as a subscription or CAS. Um, what's that all about? Yeah, this one, this actually came up in a conversation that I had with a marketing friend. Um, it was kind of like the, the exact use case that sort of necessitated the existence of something like CAS, which, um, basically at mountain, we've been doing this long enough where we've seen the most common sort of, uh, uh, uh challenges that marketers have had with this channel. So the, you know, the performance totally checks out and a lot of people kind of recognize that. Um, but then the most common sort of bit of feedback that we would get from a lot of advertisers who would see results like this and say, yeah, this is great. I'd love to, I'd love to realize this too, but I just don't have the creative to keep up with this. Um, and so uh, Mountain created something called Creative as a Subscription for precisely that sort of scenario. And really what happens in the case of uh, Creative as a Subscription is in exchange for someone just committing to spend exactly what they're already spending on the platform over a period of time, say a year, uh, Mountain is going to produce creative for you on an ongoing basis. So all of the money that you're going to be spending is just going to go straight towards media. And you don't need to kind of carve out any sort of spend that you were going to spend on this campaign towards the production of any sort of creative. You could just worry about spending on media and getting the results from your campaign. And, and that's been just tremendously impactful for a lot of advertisers and you know it's impactful for sort of obvious reasons you know um uh just for the fact that 
as we observe on this platform, uh, you need to regularly turn over your creative uh, for success. Um, it can go stale. And I think this is something that everyone who kind of consumes streaming TV or ad supported streaming TV has probably seen this before where just, you know, you get served the same ads from the same brands repeatedly and it's, uh, it creates what's called ad fatigue. Um, and it affects the effectiveness of the ads. And so for that reason, um, you really need to kind of be mindful of turning over your creative with some sort of regularity and creative as a subscription really allows people to, uh, get a steady stream of creative on an ongoing basis while also just kind of making sure that all of their budget just goes towards, uh, towards media. And, um, the other sort of benefit to this somewhat obviously is, uh, resources. You know, a lot of, a lot of advertisers don't necessarily have, um, the budget or the resources to just call upon an agency, say on a quarterly basis to produce some new exciting asset that they could run on television. Uh, but with something like this, that's totally a possibility. This is also a great opportunity to give a shout out to uh, QuickFrame. Uh, QuickFrame is a company that Mountain acquired last year. Um, QuickFrame's really, really cool. It's a video marketplace where um, anybody who has any sort of video related need, forget TV advertising, just any sort of video professional video related need can be matched in a marketplace with thousands of really impressive uh, video professionals from post-production editors to full-blown TV commercial directors, animators, motion graphics, you name it. Everybody sort of in that, in that world is on QuickFrame's platform. And Mountain certainly kind of utilizes that platform when it comes to our clients that need creative needs as well. But you're certainly free to go check out QuickFrame uh, if you have any other kinds of video needs too. So it this is... The, the creative piece is something that we're super mindful of, and it's a really important aspect of running on TV. And uh, we do everything that we can to really kind of make that the least issue, the 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 least of your worries as a marketer. Yeah, seconding the notion that QuickFrame is very cool um, and extremely talented. Um, you should yeah. you should plug Made with QuickFrame. Oh yeah, we we'll take well, our word for it. Go to Made with QuickFrame. <laughs> Great setup. Yeah. Don't take our word for it, guys. Um, go to Made, go to QuickFrame's website. Go to Made with QuickFrame. You can see all like a, a picture's worth a thousand words. These videos are millions of words worth of, of uh, verification that the work that QuickFrame is doing is fantastic. So uh, check that out. Um, cool. Uh, that is one of a few plugs you're going to see throughout this presentation. I'm just giving you a heads up right now. Um, so. Speaking of creative, uh, there is a lot of value when it comes to creative variations, obviously. Uh, as Ali mentioned, you don't want ad fatigue setting in. That's awful. Um, there's, there's a, I can think of a few commercials I've seen too, too often. It's not a great experience. Um, but in addition to ad fatigue, there is that, again, leaning into that digital capability that Connected TV has, which is that audience targeting. And so if you have the option to create one ad asset and serve it to every niche audience that you might have, or your audience splits into certain buckets that uh, different value props of, of your business appeal to, would you serve them just that one blanket ad? Or would you look for ways to tailor that uh, creative into something that's going to resonate a little bit more with each individual audience. Uh, I mean, do the second one. <laughs> Personalize the ads. People really, every every survey, you know, you guys, if you're on this call, you're probably also uh, reading a lot of industry stats and news. Um, personalization. Consumers love personalization. They, there's a lot of value there. They want to uh, engage with a brand that, you know, they, they connect with. Um, creative variations allow you to do that, allow you to create one um, ad uh, that goes to one specific audience. And this is an example here from uh, from Rumpel, where they had two uh, core audiences. They have the actively outdoorsy. You know, these are blankets you take camping or going to the beach. Um, folks that are, are going to be going outdoors. And then you have an aspirationally outdoorsy group, which is what I think I will start using if I'm uh, feeling too lazy to go for a hike or something. I'm aspirationally outdoorsy. I'd love to go out there. It's just I'm tired. Um, but when you look in these two creative examples, you see very subtle variations, one of which is um, 
the aspirationally outdoorsy spends a little bit more time, as you can see it here, inside to focus on that warm and cozy feeling. And then they go outside to go on an adventure, actively outdoorsy, different. They are going straight out the door to engage. That's huge. Um, and it, it generated strong results. Um, Allie, what, what's your take on personalized ads? First of all, they look very warm. Like, just mm-hmm. look at that. Like, just, cozy. it looks very cozy. cozy I'm, I'm, really I'm reluctantly outdoorsy. Um, but now in terms of personalization, um, to the extent that you can do it, um, it certainly makes sense to do it. And as Tim was kind of saying, um, personalization, like you don't get carried away with it. Um, this is actually quite subtle in terms of how they've kind of edited each one of these, but enough in that it sort of speaks to the different audiences that they're, that they're talking to here. And so, you know, not to be too salesy, but like there's features within the mountain platform that are, that sort of facilitate something like this, where you can upload multiple creative or run multiple campaigns against different but similar audiences and and make sure that each variation of the creative sort of speaks to them. Um, and also looking at this, like this is all just one shoot um, and it's just a matter of sequencing and end, end card messaging too, right, Tim? Like it's just a matter of what you throw up on the screen and that final text can have a huge impact on this as well. Definitely. Yeah. It's, um, you know, performance marketing basics. You want a CTA, you want to tell someone what to do and where to go. Uh, that, that can have a big impact, you know? Um, and yeah, like Ali's saying, subtle variations can have a big impact. It, you hear like, oh, I need three TV ads. Yeah. That sounds great. Yeah. That's not great, yeah. <laughs> but you know, it's just being uh, smart about it, taking um, that approach into production, collecting what you need, and just making small changes. And, and small changes can have a big impact uh, when it comes to generating that performance. So um, moving into the uh, additional stats. So we were looking at Rumpel as like an example. We're using their ads as a way to illustrate that point. Um, we took a step back and looked at the creative variation use across advertisers on our platform. And you know what? Variety is the spice of life uh, for high-performing marketers. Um, advertisers who were activating multiple creative variations, three plus, they were outperforming their counterparts who were not. Um, if you care about bottom line, if you care about the performance of, of your campaigns, this is a big one. Uh, it underlines the importance of having a different sets of creative for different purposes, or you know, if your prospecting campaign has one creative, uh, your targeting campaign has a different one, then you have uh, variations on those, like that will pay off for you. Um, and the numbers speak for themselves. This is looking at uh, a sample size of advertisers who are doing this, who have been doing this. Um, this is like a cheat sheet. Like you can see how they did it. Uh, and take that that key result away and let that influence how you go about uh, you know creating and preparing for connected TV advertising. Yeah, it's this is just this this goes back to that earliest theme of um, uh, this is no different than running paid social campaigns. this this kind of taps into the same sort of sensibility that we have in paid social where it's you know the best practice is to supply, uh, several different creative to let the platform have something to work with as it's going out and optimizing. Look at paid search, paid search. Like you can't even create static search ads anymore. Now with like the default is these dynamic search ads where you're just supplying the headlines, descriptions and, and, uh, and Google is the one that's kind of constructing the, 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 the ad for you. And so, uh, this is just yet another reminder that, uh, CTV is the same in the sense that, you need to give it as much material to work with and to to use and delivery against all the audiences that you're that you're running and really just more more generally you really have to commit to this um you know you wouldn't log into a facebook ads account and just see like a single ad with just one single with no variations of any other assets running against all of your target audiences like you know it's probably going to be a pretty sophisticated looking account with nested ad groups and so on 
And um, same story here. You know, you really have to commit to it. You need variations of your creative. You need to run multiple campaigns. You need to target a variety of audiences. That's how you're really going to extract value out of this uh, this channel. 100%. Yeah, 100%. Um, and you had, you had touched on uh, paid uh, search as an example, right? And so uh, moving into bringing that more into our conversation, um, something that we've observed is that connected TV advertising uh, for advertisers running on the mountain platform have seen a halo effect when it comes to those other channels, the other channels that they're relying on um, for, for, you know, have been relying on to grow their business, to generate revenue, to generate performance, paid search and social. Those are the go-tos. You know, hopefully after you're, you're seeing all this connected TV, you think of that uh, in the same light. And we touched on a little bit on how that creative impact, the TV ad is this very premium experience is memorable. People remember them, might not remember a banner ad, but you're going to remember a TV ad. Um, and that plays out as uh, advertisers, other channels, um, they're seeing higher conversion rates for paid social. They're running a, a connected TV campaign. They're seeing a stronger conversion rates for paid search because this is uh, more evidence. Um, you know, we touched on a little bit about why it's important to be evergreen. You want to be in someone's consideration set. You want to be top of mind. And that's what connected TV does. It, it raises that bar, uh, not just for connected to your, your TV advertising. You're going to be generating results specific to the channel, but it's actually going to have a knock-on effect to other uh, paid sources as well. Yeah. And the, 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 the point I want to kind of like reiterate when I'm looking at something like this is the channel on its own is tremendously impactful uh, for the reasons that I mentioned. Again, the, the thing that always kind of jumps out to me is just the large volume of traffic that comes from running on TV. Um, but this is just such a nice kind of residual benefit to, to running on television. We've certainly felt this. And um, for those that are familiar with paid search, like branded search term volume, uh, traffic coming from branded search term um that really has like a tremendous noticeable impact once you start running a ctv campaign so we, this is another thing that we've sort of experienced as ctv advertisers ourselves definitely it's been nice uh nice little boost for all the other efforts that we're running um cool so i mean uh we're at the temporary end of our story, the, the path to greatness story at the least. We're going to cover a little bit more after this, but um, it all, all leads to this key takeaway uh, that as we put this story together, I think we wanted to uh, find discover best practices so we could share them with more folks, um, but also uh, prove some points about how what we are putting out into the market, what we are producing and offering uh, to advertisers through our, our platform uh, is yielding, you know, durable growth, sustainable growth, um, and something that can be scaled quickly. And so I think that we've seen that play out in the data, which is awesome. Um, and it's something where I think it's not only the, the the findings are interesting, but it's also just a reminder that there is this there's opportunity when it comes to all this data. Uh, there are you you can test creative, you can test audiences, you can get immediate feedback on the 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 effect of those tests. That's huge. I mean, effective marketers are also you know scientists. Experiment, try, fail, try, succeed. You know, and you just keep going, and you learn, and you you iterate on that, and so. Uh, I think, yeah, this is a reminder that it's important to continue to do that in your in your own pursuits of advertising glory. Nothing to add there, Tim. Well said. I know. I'm. I can't help it. <laughs> <laughs> cool. All right. So, um, with that ad out of the way, what's the obsession with this story, Ali? What what for you? Um, why is this? I think we we've, we've said it in an extended way, just sharing the results, because obviously this is all interesting and, and tied to what we do, what we offer, but why, why are you so obsessed with this story? I think it's a couple of things. Um, one is um, it's nice to kind of quantify a lot of the things that we sort of intuitively understand about connected TV advertising. So I think being so close to it and seeing the success of so many campaigns, we sort of intuitively understood a lot of things such as running retargeting campaigns, 
simultaneously with prospecting or launching them at the same time, I should say, um, uh, committing to the channel fully in terms of providing it as much creative as possible, running multiple campaigns, um, and also the measurement of the campaigns too, relying on the measurement that's that's coming from it and using that to kind of dictate what your plans are going forward. A lot of that stuff we just kind of knew intuitively, but the great thing about this whole exercise is the fact that we were now able to kind of quantify all of that, be able to share that story in a way that wasn't just, hey, just trust us, we've seen a lot of this stuff, but rather actually analyzed from these campaigns. And I think Rumple is... Um, but just emblematic of uh, of like smart marketers who are really kind of committing to the channel in the same way that you would commit to the other sort of cornerstone channels you have in your acquisition marketing strategy. And so um, the totality of like this presentation, I think really says a lot about the channel and the opportunity and the timing is important because we're what about like two weeks away from when things get really wild for a lot of e-commerce businesses with Black Friday, Cyber Monday, um, and then obviously Christmas following after and other holidays. And so um, right now is the time. I, I I wouldn't be surprised if most people tuning in are already advertising on, on, on TV, CTV, I should say. Um, but the point with all of this is, is not, not necessarily to convince you to do it at all. I suspect you probably are, but it's the level of commitment that you need to make to the channel. It pays off. It certainly does, just like it does with any of the other major uh, pillars uh, that you're committing to as well. Yeah. Yeah. And I think for me, just kind of taking a step back, um, you know, my role is, is content and producing content. And stats and, and insights, especially first party ones that come from your own shop. Um, no, that's Pater. That's fantastic. Because the 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 mission is to convince folks that this is a good idea, that this is worth their time, worth investing. Um, this is real money being spent. And so, you know, you want to find these stories that you can uh, you know, show that this is the real deal. Like Ali said, like go out and don't just say, trust us, like, well, here are the, the receipts to back it up. Um, and so that has been huge. And I think in terms of, um, you know, how we've, uh, handled this story, you know, we've, we've taken a lot of the findings, which are fantastic because it gives us a, an organic way of kind of discussing, like through the lens of these results, discuss the, the, the abilities of, of what Mountain offers, like audience targeting and measurement and upper and lower funnel, all of that. It provides a very like great way to uh, illustrate those points. And it's with engaging stats and, and facts and who doesn't like a good story, right? And so we've signal boosted this. And in terms of, um, you know, putting together your own data-driven story and making the most of it, um, I think that's a key takeaway as well is, is just working with what you have finding your own data, be it through campaigns or uh, surveys, what have you, and then just essentially like transparently speaking, just exploit it, like go nuts, like make sure that everyone out there is going to see it. Um, and we did that through a number of uh, of ways to to get the word out there. There's blog content, um, we have Mountain Research, this is another plug where we uh, post a lot of um, uh, first and third party research on connected TV and media. Um, we've we've pasted this story there as well. Um, there's been press outreach. There's webinar. For example, the exact presentation you're on is an example of how we signal this, this story. Um, and also just third party partnerships. You know, making sure that people understand uh, the value that is on offer uh, if they engage. Um, and so I've I've been a big fan of everything that's been coming out around this. And I encourage you, whatever your data own data driven story is, to look for something similar. All righty. So touched on this just a little bit, but finding your own data-driven story. Um, you can see those three key takeaways, following the data, reviewing past performance, and always be auditing. Um, Ali, you've you've been in that digital advertising space. Um, I genuinely consider you an expert. So <laughs> I'd love to hear your opinion on you know, what folks should be looking for when they're trying to find their own data-driven data story. Um, you know, with regards to kind of putting together something, something like we've, we've done here, I mean, it, in, in our experience and in our, 
kind of putting together something like this. Um, I think it always quite obviously starts with just examining the best performers um, and constraining yourself, your analysis to the best performers and starting the analysis from there and trying to identify any sort of commonalities that the best performing campaigns actually have. And that leads you to these stories. That's certainly how we found Rumble. It wasn't like we just kind of cherry picked them, but actually started blind. We were just kind of examining the best performing campaigns that took place. And um, and as we were kind of digging deeper and deeper, we we sort of saw one advertiser that was really committed to the platform and uh, turning over their creative and lining up every feature of the platform uh, and seeing the success uh, to boot, uh, as we kind of saw here, too. And so um, that's, you know, in, in a sense, it's it's pretty straightforward analysis or easy analysis to do just kind of starting with the, the the best performance and then and then letting that kind of lead lead you there and along the way you're going to get a ton of follow-up questions um to, to to answer but um that's really how we did it in this case and how we do it certainly with uh, mountain research as well yeah yeah and i think that third point that always be auditing um you know, stories evolve. And so like, if you're looking at campaign, past campaign performance, it's always an, it's a good idea to, to just look at how things went and then learn from that. This isn't something that is just a one and done kind of process. It's constantly, not constantly, that sounds overbearing. It's, you know, keeping an eye, making sure that your data is telling you, it might be telling you something new, which is something that you can pivot to, but it's important just to stay on top of it. And, um, and be sure that uh, you're doing, you're making decisions based on the most up to date data available. So, um, yeah. Any any final thoughts, Ali? Before we kick it over to, I think we have Q and A next. Yeah, I think we should just dive right in. All Come right. In. Yeah. Let's do it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, hey, me again, your moderator, Jacob. Uh, hey, Jacob. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. It was a wonderful presentation. Definitely, you know, information I didn't also help prepare. Uh, uh, so thank you both again for telling everyone why we become really so obsessed with this path to greatness story. Hopefully we've transferred some of that obsession to everyone in the room so you can all start applying these insights into your own marketing campaigns once you jump off this call. So we have just a few minutes left. Um, so let's get into some audience questions. So uh, the first one that we have, um, can you speak a little bit more about why, like the why you think Connected TV has been improving all of those performance numbers on other channels that we've been seeing? I think it's a pretty easy answer. Um, there, there's, I guess, for starters, there's probably a lot of things that have contributed to it. But I think one of the biggest has been just the seismic shift of viewership to streaming TV. Um, it's just more and more and more volume um, from an ad tech perspective. There's just a lot of people streaming TV. The The proliferation of um, ad supported TV has also just absolutely skyrocketed. And, and and this is coinciding with um, with just a lot of uh, streaming costs sort of starting to kind of match uh, cable TV costs of old. And so it's just uh, a lot of people are streaming ad supported TV. And from an ad tech perspective, that's just tons and tons of bid requests. It's just it's continuously growing. Um, and there's tons of metrics that kind of support the the just sheer volume of people who are watching streaming TV as that move continues to happen. And it's already a lot of it's already happened. And, and the pandemic certainly uh, accelerated that um, it's just creating a ton of volume, which as we know, with all other major ad platforms, one of the biggest ingredients to success is large volume. Uh, Google, uh, Google ads. Part of the reason why they're so successful is that they're plugged into by far the most consequential and used search engine in the world, and also the most used video uh, sort of uh, sort of consumption website in the world in YouTube. And so that certainly supports the success of a channel like um, uh, Google Ads or a platform like Google Ads. And so same is happening with CTV. There's just such a huge volume of people that are streaming television at this point. Um, and as they continue to do so, and as the technology continues to improve on the advertising side, you're just going to see more and more success as time goes on. I have nothing to add to that. That was great. 
Yeah, I was going to give you a space there just in case you had something, but yeah, I kind of felt <laughs> like uh, Ali's was, was a just good, good response. Uh, all right, so we only have time for one more question, um, and uh, I'm going to rephrase this one just a little bit. Um, so fragmentation has been a big big conversation topic in, in, in advertising this year, especially around CTV, especially with all those new ad supported streaming tiers that have been coming out. So how do campaigns really sort of mitigate, mitigate this, um, especially with so much CTV inventory spread across so many different places? I could, look, I could, I could take this one too. This is, this is something that I'm pretty, that I think is a really great question. Um, to, to answer this, you know, shamefully is going to be a little bit of a plug for Mountain, and there's a good reason for it, and I'll, I'll explain that. Um, you're, you're certainly right. Um, things have gotten fractured, and advertisers have a lot of options in terms of how they want to go about um, doing their CTV media buying. Um, and so you could go to the open market, which is going to be brutal because you're going to be at the bottom of the waterfall for the most premium inventory, and you're going to be getting a lot of non-premium inventory that is just really obscure streaming TV apps that are ad supported. And it's going to be really hard to justify, or it's going to be really hard to extract any sort of like meaningful site visits and conversions out of advertising on very obscure um, uh, streaming TV apps. Um, and again, also premium inventory, it, it's demonstrated to work, but you're going to be at the absolute bottom of that food chain, just buying on the open market. And so in the case of Mountain, the reason why this is just kind of like a non-issue for Mountain advertisers is because one, it, it, each of those points is sort of addressed. One is that Mountain constrains its whole delivery to just premium networks. It's not just to, it's not done just so we could have that really nice talking point of, hey, it's only on premium inventory. It's, it's, we do this because our analysis of doing this for years showed that all of the performance came from running ads on the premium networks. It doesn't come from running on any sort of um, sort of obscure streaming TV um, uh, inventory and also like remnant linear TV inventory too. That's just, it's, it might help from like a cost standpoint, but it's not really going to do anything for you as an advertiser in terms of performant inventory. Um, the other big thing is uh, buying power. Uh, Mountain is the seventh largest TV buyer in the country. And with that, we command great pricing on really premium placements. We have direct relationships with publishers. And the point in saying all of this isn't just to get you excited about Mountain, but it's to make the point that um, you can piggyback that uh, buying power that Mountain has. Um, or you could go out and cut these deals directly yourselves, but um, it's it's kind of backbreaking and expensive to, to do that. So my, my point with all of this is you don't really need to worry about um, the, the sort of fractured you know, options that you have as a CTV media buyer. Uh, in the case of a platform like this, that's mitigated it by way of hundreds of direct publisher relationships and also constraining the inventory to just premium uh, premium placements. It's just, it's not really an issue. And so as programmatic goes, your ads are going to be shown to your prospect, no matter what it is that they're watching and when they're watching. it. Yeah, I think that uh, there's not much else to add to that, to be honest, but I really want to contribute. So I'm going to um, <laughs> say something, Tim. I know. I feel like I'm <laughs> under pressure now. Uh, no, it's this, it's an audience first approach, right? Like there's um, there's a, the CTV ecosystem, depending on your definition too. Like, like Ali was saying, there's a lot of lower quality inventory that does fall into CTV. But if you think about CTV, you're not thinking about those you're not thinking about obscure apps. You're thinking about, you know, the household names, the established TV networks, the, the shows that you know and can stream. And that's what, uh, when you're, you're, you're taking an approach on when it comes to premium inventory and you're making sure you're reaching your audience while they're watching that inventory. Um, fragmentation is less of a challenge when you can make that direct connection. You can find them wherever they are. That's huge. Um, and I highly recommend 
All right. Well, that's all of the questions that we have. So uh, thank you again, Allie and Tim. And thank you all uh, at home for joining us for our very first Mountain Forum. Now, if you were so glued into the session that you really didn't take as many notes as you would have liked, don't worry. That's what recap emails were invented for. So you'll receive one with the deck in your inboxes sometime in the next 24 hours. So keep on the lookout for our next Mountain Forum in 2024. And if you want to see what else we're up to, please visit our webinars page to see past presentations or register for our next event, which will be with our friends at eMarketer, what this year's stats tell us about 2024's trends. Trust me, you don't want to miss it. So thank you again for joining us. And hey... We'll see you at the next forum. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.